How's it going everybody? This is Be The Bush. Today, I'm going to talk about things only fired people can do. That is financially independent, retired, early types of people. And these are the things that you might look forward to when you do retire early. Before I begin, this video is brought to you by the Moomoo Trading App. This is free. You don't have to pay anything or a subscription or anything. But if you want to trade stocks, you need to load money onto it. And when you do your initial load of $1, $100, or $1,000, it will give you up to 20 free shares of stock. Signing up, you get one free share of stock. If you deposit $100, you get nine free additional shares of stock. If you deposit $1,000, you get 20 free shares total of free stock. And on top of this, you can get one free entry into a sweepstakes for $60,000. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. Now, if you have a salary job, even if you take one week of vacation, your boss tends to hold you against that. Now, I think the further in advance that you schedule your vacation, the worse off you're gonna be because I remember my boss always bringing it up. It's like, oh, you know, like in another week, you're gonna have one week of vacation, right? They kind of hold it against you that you're about to take vacation, so therefore you need to do more work. The general guideline, it's like an unspoken rule where one additional day of vacation that you take, you should schedule about one week in advance. So if you're gonna take like five days of vacation for like one total week, you want to schedule that roughly five weeks in advance. But if they know that you're gonna take one week off five weeks into the future, right? Four weeks before it, they'll be like, oh, you're gonna take that vacation. Oh, you better, you know, do this and this before that vacation comes up. Now, of course, if you're fired, you don't have a boss anymore. You can take vacation whenever you want. And if you're your own boss, you just have to schedule things around and then take your vacation. I remember when I first quit my job about, huh, I don't even remember how long it's been. It's over five years and two months since I did not work at a salary job anymore. And the first thing I did when I quit was take a really, really long vacation. I remember I racked up about 10 weeks of vacation just going you know, international travel. And it was the weirdest thing to not have to ask for permission. So I think that is a really, really big thing to look forward to if you ever reach the fire goal. I wanna talk a little bit about improved overall work stress levels. When I was working, I remember at one point I was so stressed that I would get aches in my stomach. This is my first job. There will be other health effects that you do not think that is a result of your work, but chronic stress, it factors into your life. Maybe you lose a little bit of hair or something and you think it's not the work. Maybe you think it's your shampoo or something, but this low level of stress or, or medium level, I would say, or high level of stress, chronic stress over a long period of time can actually degrade you. It'll make you age a lot faster. After you retire, after you are financially independent, you actually don't want zero stress. Zero stress turn you into mush. When there is no stress, you can't form diamonds. So you actually need to have a small amount of stress, but not very much. So you want to have like a little bit of appointments here and there, once every few weeks or something. You want a little bit, but not zero. Sometimes you don't sleep well for whatever reason. Maybe you have a heartburn or something, and then you woke up in the middle of the night, and then you need to sleep a little bit extra the next day. But you can't actually do this when you have a job. You have to wake up right at eight, nine, or 10 get to work, even if you had only five hours of sleep, six hours of sleep, right? But when you are retired, you can go, oh, okay, you know, I really need more sleep. I need to get my full eight hours of sleep. So if you woke up in the middle of the night for like an hour or two or something, this is not normal. But if you did, then you can sleep in a little bit, anytime that you want. Like I'm not saying to sleep in every single day, right? But sometimes you need to do this in order to get enough sleep. And what happens is when you sleep enough, yes, it took a little bit more of your day in order to get enough sleep, but the rest of your day, you're really, really productive still. As opposed to you only slept five or six hours and then you get to work, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired throughout the whole day. To me, it's kind of like a type of pain to push yourself, even though you're tired, 
you're like just kind of pushing yourself to like stay awake you're drinking caffeine this is not very healthy versus if you really need to rest you do get your rest and then you become a you know fully 100 percent working person if you are retired early you just wake up whenever you don't have an alarm clock you wake up when you feel recharged and i can't stress enough how how great this has been i've been doing this for the past five years um not all the time though because sometimes i have appointments i have you know doctor's appointments maybe i need to wake up to eat at a restaurant or something or maybe i need to catch a flight right but the requirement of waking up at a certain time dramatically reduces i don't have to do this all the time anymore and this is like a really really huge health boost when you are working and let's say you get sick and i actually got sick a lot more often when i have to go into the office it's like a cesspool of bacteria and viruses at work people just go to work even though they are sick people are not encouraged to get fully well and then come back to work because they have deadlines they have you know they only have limited vacation people don't want to just waste their vacation on just getting healthy so what happens is they get marginally well just enough to get in they're just still a little bit sick they get all these viruses they touch all the doorknobs the keyboards and stuff and so when i went to work into the office before at my engineering job i actually get sick probably once or twice every single year and on top of that I actually have to go back to work even though I'm not fully well. Maybe like, you know, I'm like 25% sick still. So when I'm at work, I have to sort of like push myself through. And it would take probably a week until I feel like 100% again. Going to stores in off-peak hours, going to banks in off-peak hours, it saves a lot of time. You don't spend any time in commuter traffic if you plan your day accordingly. The time to go outside is roughly between 10 and 3 p.m. So if you strategically go do your grocery shopping or whatever at the hardware store, you got to pick up something, right? If you go between those times, then you're not going to hit commuter traffic. When you don't waste time in commuter traffic, you just have more time for yourself. Those kind of time is like wasted life. It really is. It's like you're not doing anything productive as much as you want to be productive in the car like you know have audiobooks or something i find myself not being able to consistently just replenish audiobooks work is optional and as you guys can tell from this youtube channel i don't actually upload all that much anymore currently i have a very very low requirement of money that i need every single month in order to survive or you know just keep my net worth about level right now i am doing this video because i think it might be interesting for you guys i'm in a micro apartment i am traveling right now i'm actually eating my way through taiwan just everything is so delicious i am eating like tonkatsu really really fresh beef they have this balota shabu shabu it's like this special acorn fed pig that somehow they don't have it in the states for some reason they like this allow importation of spanish pig but they have all this here it's delicious it tastes almost like beef and those things are super interesting to me i just have a passion for eating i guess so i'm posting a whole bunch of videos on my food channel beat the bush foods i review a lot of costco snack foods on there before i went on vacation and right now i'm just doing a lot of restaurant reviews some of them when i eat it it's just like blow your mind type of thing so watch out for those videos on that channel thanks for watching this video don't forget to check out that moomoo Moo app help support this channel if you guys are interested and don't forget to give me a like and subscribe for more thanks for watching mm -hmm.